If you're about to purchase a newly refreshed Tesla Model 3, you might wanna watch this video before you make that purchase. Is a long range version that's equipped with 2170 batteries really worth the extra $7,000 purchase price? Or is the rear wheel drive version that's equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries a better option? Stick around as I compare these two variants and discuss what the extra $7,000 or so really gets you. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Now on the topic of price difference, I need to point out that if you finance a Model 3 with a traditional loan, you will end up paying more than $7,000 more for the long range all wheel drive versus the rear wheel drive Model 3. For example, using Tesla's loan estimate for someone with an excellent credit score for a six year loan financed at a 6.59% APR and $4,500 down, there would be around a $118 to $119 per month payment difference, depending on which wheel choice you go with. If you add up this difference after 72 payments, it amounts to around an $8,500 difference between these vehicles. And this doesn't even include extra costs like taxes. That's a substantial amount of money. So is the upgrade really worth it? First of all, let's talk about the features included in each one of these vehicles. For those of you who live in areas that have very harsh winter weather, the all wheel drive powertrain is going to be a big plus for you because of the extra traction that you can get in winter weather. However, it's not as if the rear wheel drive Model 3 does terrible in winter conditions. And when equipped with the right tires, that vehicle actually does pretty well. But nonetheless, with harsh winter weather, the all wheel drive system is going to be superior overall. So that might be alone enough to go ahead and push you over to the long range all wheel drive version. But beyond the powertrain difference, and of course the battery pack type and size, the main feature difference between the rear wheel drive and long range all wheel drive Model 3 is the downgraded audio system. While an improved audio system is important, even with the rear wheel drive version, you still get basic autopilot included as standard, a heated steering wheel, heated front and rear seats, ventilated front seats, vegan leather seats, front and rear infotainment screens, 360 degree acoustic glass, and also the new ambient lighting to name a few of the features. Okay, beyond the feature differences, let's talk about range because with electric vehicles, um, it's often said that range is king and range is really important for the usefulness of an electric vehicle. But is there really as much of a range difference between the two variants as it appears like at face value? Does the long range version really give you almost 70 miles more range in real world situations? Well, the quick answer to that is not really. And here's why. First of all, while there might be a 69 mile range difference between the 18 inch wheel equipped Model 3, the rear wheel drive version versus the long range all wheel drive version, if you upgrade to the 19 inch wheels, that EPA range difference drops to just 57 miles. So your wheel choice makes a difference. But in addition, another big benefit of the LFP equipped rear wheel drive Model 3 comes down to the fact that you can regularly charge an LFP equipped Tesla Model 3 to 100%, but you shouldn't do that with a 2170 equipped long range Model 3. That version should only be regularly charged to around 80% or maybe 90% at the max. Because if you do more than that, if you charge to 100% more often with that nickel based pack, that will lead to faster battery degradation and shorter battery life. So while the long range all wheel drive version may have an EPA rated range of 341 miles when equipped with the 18 inch wheels, if you're really only able to use around 80% of your range daily, that drops that usable range down to around 273 miles, which is pretty much identical to a 100% state of charge with the rear wheel drive version equipped with 18 inch wheels. In addition to that, you have to consider battery degradation. Lithium ion batteries lose a bit of capacity over time. This is completely natural, but the LFP batteries found in the rear wheel drive Model 3 should lose less range over time than the long range all wheel drive version. I talked about this in a past video, but data from TESI shows that even with Tesla's recommendation to regularly charge their LFP battery equipped vehicles to 100%, the LFP batteries after 45,000 miles on average only lose around 2% of their capacity, whereas the Model 3 in general after 45,000 miles will lose close to 6% of its capacity. So if you combine the expected range loss after 45,000 miles or so, and also layer in the fact that you should only charge the 2170 battery equipped Model 3s to 80% regularly, 
You can see here that in this case, after 45,000 miles, the actual daily range available for these vehicles is actually higher with a rear wheel drive version versus a comparable long range all wheel drive version. Beyond all that, when it comes to the amount of real world range that you should expect with each of these vehicles when driving on the highway, the difference between the rear wheel drive and the long range all wheel drive version really isn't that great. And this data comes from Bjorn Neeland on YouTube. And if you haven't watched his videos, I definitely recommend that you do go check them out. But he includes a lot of data in his spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet from his range tests. And in the past, he tested a Model 3 Standard Range Plus with a 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery pack. And this was tested during winter temperatures. And he also recently tested a Model 3 Long Range All Wheel Drive, a Highland Refresh version. And this was also tested at similar winter temperatures. And you can see that he shared here the amount of range that he got driving each of these vehicles at 90 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour. At 120 kilometers per hour or 75 miles per hour, there was only a 23 mile difference between these two variants. And at 56 miles per hour, which equates to around 90 kilometers per hour, the difference is only around 36 miles. So at highway speeds, there's really not a huge difference between these variants. And once again, this is not taking into account degradation and the 80% charge thing that I just previously talked about. Okay, so if the real world range really isn't that drastically different, what about the charging speeds? Is that drastically different? Well, according to evdatabase.org, the LFP equipped rear wheel drive Model 3 takes around 25 minutes to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge, whereas the long range all wheel drive version takes around 27 minutes to do that same charge. However, since the rear wheel drive version has a smaller battery pack, we need to compare this in terms of how many miles are being added per minute of charging. So as you can see there, the long range all wheel drive version does add a little bit more miles per minute of charging, but it's not drastically different. So really in reality, the charging speed difference between these vehicles is really pretty marginal. Okay, beyond that though, what about performance? I know performance is really important to a lot of people, so let's briefly talk about that. According to Tesla, the rear wheel drive version can go zero to 60 miles per hour in around 5.8 seconds, whereas the long range all wheel drive version can do that in around 4.2 seconds. That's a difference of 1.6 seconds, which in terms of zero to 60 mile per hour times, that is a big difference. But it's not as if going from zero to 60 miles per hour in 5.8 seconds is really all that slow. Not too many years ago, that would have been fast enough for the average sports car. But now, of course, since zero to 60 mile per hour times have gotten quicker for most vehicles, this is somewhat slower than sports cars, but it's still very respectable and in my opinion, fast enough for the average driver. Before I wrap this up, I also need to discuss the difference between the warranties of the long range all wheel drive Model 3 and the rear wheel drive version. The long range and performance Model 3 and Model Ys have an eight year or 120,000 mile powertrain and battery warranty. Whereas the rear wheel drive version has a battery and powertrain warranty of still eight years, but only 100,000 miles. So that extra 20,000 miles is a pretty big deal, but when it comes to the lifetime of the battery pack, I expect that the LFP battery pack will outlast the 2170 battery pack in many cases. And really the only wild card there is the powertrain. So yes, that extra warranty is a bonus, but I don't believe it's a deal breaker in my opinion. I know for some of you watching this, some of the differences that I mentioned may be worth the extra $7,000 plus, but for me personally, I would rather go with the LFP equipped rear wheel drive Model 3. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below, I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.